Hello everyone, this is Emmanuel from Iban in Brussels. Today is a very nice day and thank you all for joining us uh, for this webinar, Living with a Business Angel, what a relationship with, between investors and entrepreneurs looks like. Our um, speakers are um, Fabrice Testa and Lorenzo Scatena. Uh, Fabrice is a co-chairman of the Luxembourg Space Tech Angels and the Iban Space, uh, also Iban Space chairman. Lorenzo is secretary general of uh, Imaldi Foundation and uh, he covers also other roles. And uh, soon uh, Eleonora will introduce us much better these uh, two great people. And uh, just a quick information for you. Um, this webinar is not as usual with the slides that uh, uh, you can look at. It will be more a fireside chat and so Q&A uh, sessions. So if you have questions, please write them on the chat and then we'll take, uh, uh, we will uh, present them to the speakers as soon as uh, possible. And this webinar will be recorded and uh, you can uh, find uh, re uh, watch it later on our Space Up YouTube channel and also on Iban Vimeo uh, channel. So I will say now, Eleonora, please, the stage is yours. Uh, you can start uh, um, with uh, presenting our great speakers and um, the first round of questions that we already got online. Perfect, thank you, Emanuele. So, good morning, everyone. I'm Eleonora Lombardi. I'm the project manager of Research Consortium Ipatia for SpaceUp. Uh, so, as Emanuele mentioned, I will briefly introduce you the two eminent speakers we have today uh, with us. Uh, so, to, uh, we have Fabrice Testa, that is the chairman of the Eban Space Executive Committee and co-chairman of the Luxembourg Space Tech Angels Association. He is also an angel investor and a serial entrepreneur who successfully founded, co-founded and participated in the launch of multiple tech startups, which created hundreds of jobs and generated multi-millions revenues. He will uh, team up together with Lorenzo Scatena, that is the Secretary General of the Eduardo Amaldi Foundation. He's also Director General of Research Consortium Ipatia and Managing Director of a strategic management firm. He has over 10 years experience as investor, mentor and board member, having a background in finance for innovation, technology transfer, and intellectual property management in both private and public sector organization. So I thank you both for being here uh, with us and for your time. And without further ado, I would go straight to the first question that I address first to Fabrice and then to Lorenzo. So the first question is, who is for you an angel investor and who, what is the difference between a business angel and a venture capitalist? So Fabrice, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Yeah, well, let's say very simple, you know, a business angel is someone that uh, puts uh, his money into, uh, into startup ventures. Uh, so generally business angels are people that uh, were, uh, let's say, former entrepreneurs or maybe former executives and they have, uh, they have some money, uh, either as an entrepreneur, maybe they did some exit and so they have some money that they want to deploy uh, in some companies. Uh, or there are some executives that, uh, let's say, uh, have maybe some savings and they want to invest uh, into, uh, yeah, let's say, young companies and to, uh, yeah, and to get some payback, of course. Uh, I think generally the business angels uh, are investors that probably they want to help uh, uh, young entrepreneurs. If they were entrepreneurs uh, like me, for example, that's my case, uh, I want to somehow give back. It's also why uh, I'm doing also mentoring because uh, I always say I had not the chance that entrepreneurs have to today. Uh, today, there are so many, let's say, possibities uh, for entrepreneurs to be supported. 
and uh, when I started, uh, yeah, I had maybe not so so uh, many possibilities. So I think it, it's a, it's a great time to be an entrepreneur and to get the help of uh, business angels for sure. Uh, I think we will we will discuss later yeah, at which stage a business angel intervene. But yeah, to to make a long story short, a business angel is someone that invests his own money into uh, yeah quite uh, high risk uh, and early stage companies. Okay, thank you very much Fabrice. Lorenzo? Well, uh, I have no many things to add. Uh, the definition is quite clear. Um, there, is, there is a scientific definition to define uh, who is a business angel. But I think that uh, three are the main characteristics um, to consider um, an investor as a business angel. Um, the first is that uh, he uh, perceives himself as a business angel. The second is is not searching, it is not moved just by, by making money idea, but is not investing, is investing to make profit and is investing in not business as usual or me to company. He's not searching an unicorn, but is a, it is forced to search something more than um, an investment in the stock exchange market. And the third characteristic is that uh, the value of the investments per round per company should be not less than 10,000 euro, probably, or more and not more than uh, 1 million euro. And is in general between 35, 30, 40 years old, up to 65, 70 years old. I would also say that probably in business centers has uh, invest much less, right? It's around 25,000 uh, euros in general. This is how our even statistics. Um, yeah, the average probably is average between is. 25 and 50. Yeah. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> All right, thank you very much for your first answer. So I would go on the second question, uh, um, this time starting from Lorenzo. So what mm -hmm. is the self-assessment that the company should do before looking for a business angel? So now we are uh, seeing the, the perspective of the company and <clears throat> Uh, as a business angel? Well, uh, before applying for a business angel investments, a company should understand that uh, angel investors are investing their personal wealth in an unlisted market. And uh, that, as I previously said, uh, they are forced by METS to seek returns on investments of around eight, ten times what invested. Um, it's a kind of growth that just an exit strategy through another investor with a dilution of shares for both uh, angel and entrepreneur, but a dilution of shares can guarantee. So a decision to seek investments from an angel investor, it's the same with VCs, uh, is also a commitment to sell the company. Provided that a uh, potential buyer, of course, with for the right price, let's say high enough, is found, of course. So the company itself should not, in my opinion, be a life mission for the for the founder. Should be um, one phase of one company of his life. Um, I say, in my opinion, an entrepreneur in condition to accept an angel investment is someone that preferred to own 10% shares in a 1 billion company, instead 100% uh, shares in a 100 million company. And the difference between these two approach, it's remarkable. So um, if you are not that kind of uh, entrepreneur, um, Probably um, you should uh, use debt in you, you should use debt instruments, typically provided by banks. Uh, accepting that uh, you are running a business as usual company, which is not, uh, which is good. So before searching for an angel investments, 
as a company, I will consider some issues. Uh, if uh, I should be financed as far as possible with personal assets or assets coming from uh, family or friends and uh, sales, of course, and debts and grants. And if I decide to, to seek for an investor, I should uh, probably um, decide previously on how large share of the company I am psychologically willing to relinquish. All right. Thank you, Lorenzo. Fabrice, do you want to add something on, on that question? Yes, sure. Uh, I think Lorenzo, let's say, uh, explained quite well, uh, yes, uh, what is important from uh, yes, a, shareholder, a shareholding, let's say, perspective. Uh, and that's, that's uh, for sure very important. Now, my advice to entrepreneurs is uh, don't, don't, let's say, uh, let's say, select uh, a business angel only because, uh, or choose a business angel only because he is giving you, let's say, uh, money. I think uh, I know that some, some entrepreneurs are a bit uh, desperate and they take, uh, let's say, the money that is on the table. Uh, for me, that's, that's probably one of the biggest mistakes that an entrepreneur can make. I think you, you need to choose wisely the, the business angels you want to work with. Why? Because, you know, it's, it's a long-term relationship. So I would say the first thing with a business angel is that you feel comfortable with that person and you can have a drink, you can have a lunch with that person. Uh, and, and you, yeah, at some point it can become a, a friend somehow, you know. That, that's the first thing. The second thing is what the business angel can bring you as he experience in the, in the field you are. Uh, is it his first deal or he has many experience uh, as a business angel? He did several deals. Uh, maybe he can bring some other business angels. Can he open doors for you? Uh, in your business, maybe he has a huge network in the market you are, and maybe he can open the doors. If not, uh, maybe he can. He is a, a rock star in sales, and maybe he can help you uh, to build a, a good sales and marketing plan. So always look what the business angel can bring, because most of the business angels they don't want to be just passive, let's say, investor, just putting money on the table. They want to contribute. And so check what the business angel can contribute to your company. I think that's, that's probably uh, the, the first thing I, I would advise entrepreneurs to, to look for. Thanks, okay, Fabrice. Thank you very much, Fabrice. Emanuele, maybe we yes, go... Yes, indeed. Uh, Fabrice, we got a question that is very related to what you just yes. said. And uh, we, in another question, we will tackle, we will tackle also this uh, topic more. Um, indeed, uh, the investors is interested to, um, to provide not just the money, but also coaching uh, um, uh, knowledge. Yes. Uh, something that is much more than just money. And we got this question of, um, this, uh, from Irma asking if uh, there is um, a phase, a stage, uh, where the business angel can provide more uh, more value than in other phases. For example, uh, let me add that um, she said there could be an, uh, a distance uh, coaching, so not not um, close coaching, but probably something that you can do remotely. And, and then this could uh, raise the point that probably there is a, um, a coaching phase before the funding, the funding session when the investor enter and the leaving stage. Maybe you can, uh, you and Lorenzo can uh, ex explain a little bit more. You mean the different uh, stages? Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, the different so stages, but also yeah. if um, the investors can also provide value before, even if yeah. you don't invest, but you can provide something. If but it, it may happen, uh, actually, that uh, 
uh, a startup founder initially he needs uh, just some mentoring uh, and at some point the mentor uh, fall in love let's say with the with the startup and uh, and if the mentor is also a business angel he can also invest into the company that that's that that's that happen of course uh, quite uh, quite often uh, so that's that's something that uh, it's i think perfectly doable uh, um, one way to to do this and uh, probably something that we can discuss also at some point is uh, the notion of sweat equity that at some point you know uh, uh, some business angel can uh, provide some mentoring etc and maybe uh, besides let's say putting some money they can also uh, let's say uh, arrange a deal with the with the entrepreneur uh, for sweat equity so what does it mean sweat equity is that uh, uh, basically uh, yeah you will get some additional shares because uh, as a business angel you, you spend some time helping the entrepreneurs to build the business and, and so this this has to be value because uh, yeah at some point it's not always pro bono so it can be value so let's assume that uh, with uh, if, if you put 50k in the company you have uh, i don't know two percent or three percent of the company uh, and maybe you can get one two percent more because you spend uh, i don't know one day uh, per week or you spend uh, uh, three days per month something like this helping the entrepreneurs so th these are things that are perfectly negotiable uh, between an entrepreneur and a business engine thanks thanks for this yeah. Well, I completely agree. Uh, I have to say that uh, as um, business angels study, of, of course, the, the company they invest in, uh, or they want to invest in, uh, also founders should learn the way and principles under which a business angel invests. As Fabrice told us, uh, it is not just uh, uh, money to move, uh, a business angel and um, I think that uh, the first thing will be having a chat or uh, uh, discussing your ideas uh, to determine the, the perfect profile of investor that is optimal for your company. How, how big part of sweat equity, network equity you need, how much money and the timing. So um, also, which know-how and network do you need for your company? If this angel investor is able to provide these such kind of things to you. So, yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you very much, Lorenzo. So I will uh, go a little bit uh, in depth on your personal experience. Uh, so, um, can you give us an example of the type of wet or networking equity that a business angel would provide the entrepreneur? Yeah, maybe an experience that you had. So the question is for Lorenzo? Or? Also for you, Fabrice. Ah, yeah, okay. okay. Uh, so the, the size of the, the sweat equity, uh, I think it, it's really something that has to be negotiate, negotiated. Uh, but I would say generally is. Uh, it's a few percent. Now, it really depends about the valuation of the company because you can make a, a quite easy calculation. Uh, let's assume that uh, uh, the valuation, I don't know, it's, uh, it's uh, five, uh, five million. So uh, one person is, uh, is 50,000 50, euro. Uh, if, uh, let's say, you spend one day per week, uh, value at uh, let's say 1000 per day because uh, you know uh, an advisor or a coach uh, i think is something which is not abnormal this means that after one year yes it's it represents uh, 50000 that you could have let's say invoice to someone uh, and here you don't invoice but instead you take uh, let's say uh, yeah one one percent uh, of the company so so, yeah, but so I think it's, it's a question of negotiation, but usually I think sweat equity 
it's not more than a few percent. Uh, if, we, if we look at uh, the, the rules in the Founder Institute, for example, uh, it's maximum one person. But okay. I, I've, I've seen some deals where it's a two or three person, something like this. Uh, but I would say generally it's uh, not more than this. All right, perfect, Fabrice. So um, I would go a little bit back. Uh, on may, the... may I add something? Ah, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Just, just, to, just to say that uh, under my personal experience, um, it's quite normal that an angel invest or invest in different companies in different ways. No? Sometimes uh, as a passive role and uh, in one company and an active role, uh, active role in another one. So um, uh, I'm, I, I, have, I have no statistics or experience to, to underline how much sweat or network equity is evaluated or should be evaluated. Probably Fabrice is, is giving us the right percentage. It, sound, it sounds uh, right. Uh, to me, uh, I just want to I, I just want to stress that uh, it is really a matter of negotiation. Um, in a very small uh, competitive market, where um, the networking is uh, very very uh, relevant, could be more. In a more open market, uh, could be less. So, um, what is sure is that uh, many studies say that better results are achieved in a company that uh, is investing uh, not just or is re receiving investments not just in terms of money but also in sweat equity and network equity um, so yeah that's it more or less my opinion <laughs> All right. Yeah, thank you. So as I was saying, um, I would go a little bit back uh, on this relationship between the business angel and the entrepreneur. So um, I would like to ask you uh, what a business angel looks for in a team and what are the um, questions, the most frequently asked question that you as a business angel uh, would ask to an entrepreneur? So maybe Fabrice, you can start. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, you know that uh, my name is Testa with, and it starts with a T. So I use <laughs> my, uh, my three T's or uh, four T's uh, framework. W what does it mean is that the first T is the technology. So I look at the technology or yeah, what is the breakthrough, let's say ID, et cetera. Um, I think for me, it's very important that, uh, yes, uh, a company has really something which, uh, which unique, uh, let's say, selling points and uh, uh, a, a, a strong, let's say, value proposition. So that, that's the first, let's say, the, the second one is traction. Can, can the company really attract a big part of a market? Uh, so is, is really the company able to uh, to scale and to, to become big, uh, I, I think that that's, in my opinion, very important. And, and the, the third T is the team. Uh, who is behind, let's say, the venture? Is it a, a solo entrepreneur? That's, for me, is more, more of most of the time a deal breaker. Or do they have uh, the perfect team? You know, uh, most of the time uh, it is said that uh, you need three three types of uh, people in, in, in the funding team, the usher, the, the hipster, and, um, uh, and the hacker. Uh, so I think that's, that's very, very important, is to have a quite good mix uh, in the team. And the fourth team, the fourth T, sorry, is the time to market. Uh, it's something that most uh, people uh, don't think too, too much about, but I think for me it, it's important. Is the company, too early uh, or too late. Uh, if it's too late, well, uh, you can imagine that uh, let's forget about it. But if it's too early, uh, I think as a business angel, you have to think also about it because maybe, you know, to, to pass from the early uh, adopters to the early majority, uh, maybe uh, a lot of cash uh, has to be burned. Uh, so, uh, 
So this may be a problem, I mean. So sometimes, uh, yes, it's, it's good to be uh, quite early, but sometimes it's, uh, it can really uh, be at the, uh, yeah, it can really cost a fortune. So that's something to, to, be, uh, to be analyzed, in my opinion. All right. Um, Fabrice, um, when you mentioned um, time, yes. uh, do you mean uh, the time of the stage of the company or also the time uh, considering the, um, the social economy uh, situation? Because sometimes, you know, you have a very good company, ready, prepared, but the, the, the social situation around in the world is not the right timing. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's more what, what we call the time to market. Is it the right time to launch this product? Uh, I, I mean, for example, today uh, in the, let's say, Corona time, if you launch, let's say, any uh, remote, let's say, business or delivery business, etc., uh, probably it's the right time because there is a momentum uh, behind this. If, or if you have a nice, let's say, I don't know, application for uh, uh, remote education uh, or telemedicine, etc. Uh, I think it's per the perfect timing. Now, if, if you launch, for example, now uh, a new airline company, probably it's the, the worst time to do it. So I think, I think it's, it's important to be, uh, is it, let's say, the, yeah, the, the right time to launch your business or not? Uh, for example, if, if, you, if you launch, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, or your drilling business, uh, probably today it's not the, the right time to do it. But if you launch a renewable energy business, it's probably something uh, which is the right time because there is uh, a momentum behind, let's say, uh, climate change fighting, etc. Maybe, Lorenzo, you want to add something? Well, um, yes, I have no technology background. So technology is not my... Um, I. I graduated in law, so uh, studied then uh, corporate finance. And um, so I have no technology skills, not enough uh, in front of a technology idea that is, of course, essential to run a business. Um, I assess the idea with other people. What, I, uh, what is very, very relevant for me is the, the team. Uh, I look for in a team because an A class team can uh, successfully release a B class idea, but it's not, on the contrary, a B class team uh, in general running uh, or realize uh, A class idea. And uh, I do not invest in um, companies with just the founder if it is, there is not a team. And um, generally, I ask, I ask to the companies I want to invest in, of course, uh, what's their selling point. Um, it's the same in that case. It's important, especially for VCs, eh? but also for, for uh, investors, uh, angel investors. I am searching for... Uh, um, I'm searching to understand uh, um, if the problem they were they want to solve is, um, is um, defensible. The business idea is defensible. If there is like a moat, no, uh, using the Warren Buffett uh, or Elon Musk uh, expression, and um, if the market is addressable, uh, how big could be? So um, they, I have four sub questions, uh, a part of the team, let's say problem, solution, market, attraction. Um, the, second, the second question I, I my second question is, uh, what is the cash burn rate or runaway? Uh, becoming from not a technology background, I, uh, I know that running out of cash is one of the top reasons for businesses failing. And uh, as, a, as an angel investor, having been a manager, um, I'm completely aware that uh, even if the business is profitable, can fail if cash is not managed properly. So, um, and especially runaway is uh, cash runaway is my 
uh, first uh, uh, point of uh, discussion because um, the bound rate can change, it can calculate in a different way, gross or net, but the run, the runaway, let's say, um, the amount of time until the business runs out of cash is absolutely relevant. Then uh, I always ask the personal motivation for the business and the ambition. You know? I am searching for, for people that uh, really want to not to create a unicorn because I'm not a venture capitalist, but uh, uh, someone that has the ambition to create uh, the largest possible business. Uh, if they want to create a business, uh, they can pass to their family or uh, a business that can be cash generative business uh, to, you know, to provide uh, a good income. Um, I'm not, I'm not consider it as a good investment for me. No? And in general, I advise the company to not consider uh, an angel investments uh, their target. And uh, probably last, uh, last question I, I try to explore is what, how much they are aware about economics. Let's say I don't want, I know that I have to focus on technology. I know that I have to focus on traction. I have to focus on the, the problem, which are my first questions. But I need to, I don't need, uh, um, of course, as investor, I want to know that the business can scale and uh, which is the gross margin, uh, which are the fixed costs, of course. no. And I'm not searching for a founder that is also the best manager ever. Mm? But I want to understand if the founder, the entrepreneur is flexible enough to understand how important are these kind of things. No? Not just someone that wants to, 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 uh, to realize uh, a product. And in general, when someone is asking for money to, to build something, and then with that demonstrate the traction, uh, for me is not a good investment. All right, thank you very much. So let's go a little bit uh, in depth in this relationship between the investor and the entrepreneur. So we have been talking about this marriage uh, between investor and entrepreneur. So during uh, uh, the honeymoon, what do you expect from the entrepreneur? Maybe Lorenzo, you can, you can start, or Fabrice. Yeah, Lorenzo, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, I search, um, okay. I search that uh, promises can be true, huh? and uh, <laughs> that can be uh, a reality. Um, I search, uh, I focus a lot on, on, the, on the team and uh, to support the, the team. I search for will of the team, let's say, a strong commitment and time dedication. Uh, I know that many founders are serial founders, but uh, uh, this is normal, but I want to see their um, commitment to the, to the business idea, how much, how, in a how intense way they are working and they want to work into the company. Um, uh, the courage, how brave they are, on involve themselves into the company, how much they are building a relationship network and with what kind of approach, with which kind of marketing spirit they are trying to, um, to develop between uh, themselves and their colleagues, of course. And uh, um, I also search for, uh, um, I expect, let's say, um, a team that sits uh, reliable um, and um, open to um, cross-contamination. No? I don't want, of course, um, backup people in the team, no? which is useful, but I, want, I, don't, I don't like people divided into small groups, not com having communications or relationships between them. And this under uh, you know, a, a, 
just looking uh, uh, on the on the on the team. Then, uh, of course, I search for uh, potential returns, uh, growth, of scalability, um, the exit strategy, and then I search for the reason beyond the commercials. No. I, I also, um, I'm not that kind, and I, I think that angel investors in general, as we mentioned before, are interested just on the economics of the deal. Mm -hmm. um, they want to uh, help to make a difference in the world with their investments, to help new you know, entrepreneurs to to develop a, develop a technology or uh, for many other reasons. All right, thank you. Fabrice, maybe um, you can go a little bit more in detail yes. on, on, the, on the specific real, um, like, um, expectation yes. from the entrepreneur. Thank you. Yeah, I think the, the first thing for me is uh, the entrepreneur should be honest, uh, transparent, and always tell the true and and uh, and say yes things uh, are how they are um i think what what can be really terrible is entrepreneurs that, that uh, hide let's say some facts etc because maybe they are afraid that uh, moreover if as a business angel you are also a board member that maybe uh, at some point uh, they can be a fire or something like this, uh, or, or you, you try to replace, well, may, they may be, if uh, they have uh, shares, they can, uh, of course, stay on board as shareholder, but maybe that, uh, yeah, uh, the board decide to, to put a new CEO, for example, things like that. Um, I think that that's really terrible when you have this kind of situation, when the, the CEO or the, the C management team they hide some facts and they are not uh, telling really the, the truth. Uh, I think the, the business angels and the other investors are there to help. And, and what we want is the success of the company. Now, of course, if really the management is not good, I think, uh, yeah, we, we have to take some measure, of course, to, to recover the situation. I think for me, that's the first, the first point. The second one is, in my opinion, the, the management should be uh, maniac about uh, generating sales and uh, and too often uh, there are some startups they just want to raise money uh, yeah they have a nice idea okay we are going to raise money uh, they, they they spend the money uh, developing nice products etc uh, but they never let's say confront their products with the market so uh, when I do mentoring I always mention the, the coffee shop uh, Tip: What is the coffee shop tip? Is that uh, if you, it's good if you develop, for example, a, a app or a website or something like this. So for all, let's say, I would say, online services, it works perfectly well. Uh, you you go in a coffee shop uh, at least when they are open, and and you uh, and you just say to some a guy in the coffee shop, look, uh, I pay you a coffee and you give me a honest feedback about uh, my product. And I'm always surprised that uh, most entrepreneurs, they wait too long before really to get a feedback from the market. And so I think the, the first source of money should be revenues, should be generate, let's say, sales. So in my opinion, the team should be really maniac about generating sales. And it should be their obsession to have customers and to generate sales before, let's say, raising uh, uh, the next round of, uh, of money. And, and third, is, which is a bit, let's say, the consequence of this, is use the money uh, wisely. Uh, I mean, of course, when there is a fundraising, uh, there are some uh, objectives with, uh, with the, the funds that are raised. Uh, so uh, the money should be used accordingly. Uh, but I can give you an example. For example, I invested in a company and the, and the CEO and founder, he, he didn't want to, uh, to hire a sales guy Why it was, let's say, foreseen. And he, wa he wanted to do everything by himself. And he did three burnouts. That's just ridiculous, you know. 
there was the money to hire a sales a sales guy, so he should have done what is what was necessary to hire a sales guy to help him uh, instead of uh, trying to do everything by himself. So. Uh, yeah, these are the, 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 the kind of things that uh, I think are important. Thanks, thanks Fabrice. Indeed, I think trust is the, the yes. main, main part in a relationship. And um, quite often, yes, it's uh, the key point on, uh, on, on business. It's really important. Um, now we had a very a lot of you have a lot of questions on the, on the chat let's try to <laughs> there is no real order so maybe sometimes we have uh, to come back and forward on some topics and um, we have a question from martina asking if you have a team that is helping you to identify and assessing the uh, funding opportunities i think for probably for lorenzo he's working the foundation there is a team but probably business angels sometimes I think they work alone, right? Or they share ideas with other investors. How does this work? Yeah, personally, no, I don't have a team uh, looking at the deals, etc. No, it's true that uh, within uh, business angel networks like Iban or uh, Lestia or Alban, Luxembourg Business Angel Network, yeah, there are there are there is some form of uh, deal curation uh maybe by some other business angels etc uh but personally i don't have uh, anyone helping me and, and you lorenzo uh well i don't share investment opportunities uh, inside the foundation because it's not a, a business angel uh in general um if i don't have any idea about about the technology i i yes i search assessment um uh, from uh, consultants maybe or uh, if I invest in syndicate uh, I, um, I I search my uh, other investors opinion okay okay and now a question that's not related uh, to 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 this uh, relationship between business angels and entrepreneurs but it's quite interesting, I think. It's from Anna, and she's asking that she would like to become an investor, a business angel. And she's asking if uh, it's useful to understand entrepreneurship to cover this role. Probably I will say yes. What do you think? Yeah, I think, I think of course, uh, it makes sense to at least understand what is uh, creating. I think to be a business angel, probably you don't need to be... Uh, a former entrepreneur it helps for sure but it's not mandatory but at least you should understand let's say uh, uh, what does it mean to to build let's say uh, early uh, a startup uh, i think it, it, it really helps to understand the different steps the uh, the, the challenges that uh, an entrepreneur can uh, can meet etc so i think it, it's definitely helpful but I think the best advice maybe I can give to, to her to become a business angel is be part of a network. So uh, of a business angel network, uh, that, that's probably the most helpful because you will discuss with all the business angels. They will give you some tips and maybe the first investment you do with some uh, seasoned uh, investors that uh, they know what to do, they know how to structure the deal, etc. So that's probably the best way to start. Lorenzo, do you think we should add something or? Yeah, I completely agree. And I have just to add that, uh, in my opinion, also, if you don't have an um, entrepreneurial background, you can study because there is a lot of literature about yeah. experience, biographies and experience of people that um, uh, former entrepreneur describe their experience or an entrepreneur that became investors so investing is a job you know you can practice it one day per week instead of uh, 24 hours per day but you you can um, you can um, take the tools you need hmm? in literature and uh, talking with other people and of course networking with other people and making maybe a first little small investments you know? 
uh, not alone uh, with someone else and uh, step by step uh, um, be more experienced making a lot of uh, uh, having failures because experience experience is to fail you know and there are also plenty of uh, of webinars organized by business angels network like iban for example yes uh, alban in luxembourg is also organizing a lot of uh, different uh, webinars etc so i think that's also a good way to to learn this uh, and there are some courses also for business angels thanks we have a kind of pro um, provocation um a question from uh, uh, Irma, um, it seems that angels spend particularly much time on the investee when they are facing bad circumstances. And um, she's adding, a VC said, avoid to spend a lot of time on failures. Make sure that you choose for the successful ones. Well, I think it's uh, probably it's like saying, okay, if your company is dying, but kill it and uh, move forward. Move look at something else. What do you think about this? <laughs> you think you spend too much time on uh, uh, leaving dead companies or um, something like that? Uh, I'm not sure to understand really the, what, what the question is. Uh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> May I try to answer? May I try yeah, to yeah, answer? No, Maybe so it can help uh, Fabrice. Um, the question is, 99% um, an angel investor and uh, a founder, an entrepreneur, are making the same game and playing the same game. It's not the same for VCs. Also because VCs is not investing uh, his own money. And uh, have a, um, um, a limited time period to invest and to uh, realize the investment. So, uh, Everyone, angel investors and VCs, investors, has to uh, write off some initiatives, some investments, because um, assumptions were wrong or uh, for many other reasons. But uh, in general, um, an, angel investment, an angel investor is moved by something more, something different, um, with a different uh, time period, which is not just five years, could be eight or ten years. Um, and um, this is the reason why he can spend, he wants to spend more time also in um, ventures that are not that, uh, that profitable or in which something went wrong. Uh, in which uh, some bad uh, circumstan circumstances um, screwed up, no? Uh, and the VC, VC investors decide uh, in a simpler way to write off the 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 the, 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 the investments. Uh, I I completely agree, but I, I think that. Uh, I angel investors and, and VCs, they, they step in at a different stage of the, of the company grow. Uh, uh, when, when, uh, when an entrepreneur has just an ID and he, he wants just to, to start the business, uh, the only way is to find some business angel that believe in them, believe in their ID and can help them financially. Uh, then, then as soon as uh, they, they start generating some revenues and uh, they need really a, a lot more money to grow, is where the VCs, uh, they step in. Now, some business angel will stay on board. Uh, sometimes there are some VCs that can uh, pay, let's say, the business angels and the, and the business angels, they do, uh, let's say, uh, a nice uh, profit. Uh, but... I don't see uh, business angels, uh, let's say, uh, uh, and VCs have uh, so, so many, let's say, divergent, let's say, objective, because at some point, what we, we all want as investors is to have the company which is successful. Uh, and so the, the small 
aren't VCs, they understand this. Uh, most, some VCs uh, were former business angels before, and they perfectly understand this. Mm. All right, thank you very much. So since we are running out of time, I will ask a question to Fabrice and then a question to, to Lorenzo, so two different okay. questions. So I start with Fabrice, um, summing up a bit of the question that we have also on the chat. Um, can you give us an example of a success and failure story in the relationship between uh, you as angel investor and an entrepreneur? I think the, the failure uh, I explained before, it was, uh, you know, this startup uh, with uh, this guy that he didn't want to uh, hire a sales, a sales uh, person, uh, why he had the money for it. And, uh, and he did three burnouts. I think it's just ridiculous in my opinion. Uh, as success, uh, yes, uh, I have one company in my portfolio and you know, the, the founders, they, they are always uh, giving news of what's happening. So they keep us informed, etc. regularly. Uh, they ask for advices and they take into account the advices, etc. I think this is a very good relationship, in my opinion, where, uh, yes, we, we see that we can, uh, we are used as we should be. Uh, so, but uh, the startup that you never have, let's say, any information uh, or only when there is a shareholder meeting. Uh, I think that's, that's what I, I, I'm not looking for. Right, thank you very much. And then the last question for Lorenzo, and if you have some time, we go back to the chat. So um, during the, the relationship still uh, uh, between the angel investor and entrepreneur, what is the uh, decision maker power of the angel investor? So basically, what is the role of the investor in the company, since we know that most of the company are scared of sharing the equity uh, and, the, and the role that the investor can have in their, uh, in their business. Uh, so what is the degree of intervention, of intervention of the business angel? Okay, it's a challenging question. Uh, it depends a lot on the single situation, but I want to offer to you uh, a definition. Credit of this definition goes to Alex Turkett. It's not, of course, mine. It divides like uh, um, angel investors in four uh, um, categories. The first one is the, let's say, micro micromanager. Is some, someone that uh, does not really trust the entrepreneurs and the team and uh, that often search for a board seat to ensure that everything is going uh, as it, it was planned. But in our startups, it's quite, uh, it's, it's quite common that uh, uh, things are not going according to plan. So um, the relationship between uh, angel investor and uh, the company uh, can be um, really bad. Um, the, 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 the investor become um, skeptical about the companies and tend to involve himself in more and more and more and more decisions. And uh, at the end, the, 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 the company will not have any success. The second category, it was, it is the like uh, the apparent giant. This is the investor that uh, at the beginning present himself like an expert professional, um, try to get uh, um, a significant shareholding of a startup, but uh, behind, let's say, the business card, uh, things are different. Uh, he, he or she invests little time as possible on the company and also the network um, he or she presented the high level network the strategic doors that uh, could be open uh, for the team uh, at the end uh, are not that uh, the paramount uh, is not uh, uh, that relevant so um, this is a problematic approach also then there is the broker this as an investor that is committed in the in the beginning 
but uh, gets frustrated uh, uh, most of the time being unable to face off with the complexity of human attitudes, uh, having to, 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 to create relationship with engineers or scientists or someone that is quite far from his background. Um, so this ends in a misconception of the startup on the part of the investor and uh, on frustrated expectations management um, uh, on the part of, of, of the founders of the entrepreneurs. And then the, the last decision, which will be the, the, the perfect angel and the way uh, as a, a business angel should um, create relation with the startups is the master Yoda. It's someone that uh, uh, carefully manage expectation of entrepreneurs, always delivers on his promises, and uh, as a balanced approach working in team, understanding so no micromanagement, and uh, always understand when that uh, um, you have to listen others, others the, the founders and the, the team members, and uh, you have to accept uh, uh, criticism of course, constructive criticism, and you have to open to advice. And this is the, the best investor or the only investor you should search for because it's also the investor that opens to you the, the doors of other investors involving the team into the solution of, of the, pro, the problems, let, let, letting you grow up, more or less. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, maybe Fabrice, you can answer to the, um, to the question regarding the R&D that you were typing so everybody can... Yes, uh, so it's a question from Mardan, uh, apparently uh, related to uh, R&D and uh, he is asking uh, what is the, the maximum uh, duration. Uh, my advice is if you have intensive R&D, try to get some grants uh, in order to de-risk as much as possible before the private investors can step in. Because for a, for a private investor, if there is a very a lot of R&D, they can be a bit scared about it. So you should come with the private investors when uh, your technology is de-risked as much as possible. Um, and apparently, yes, in the space industry. So I would say in the space industry, because anyway, the durations are longer, I would say maybe uh, two, three years is something which is acceptable. Uh, yeah, but longer, it becomes to be a bit complicated, in my opinion. Now, if you are in the biology or genomics or things like this, probably the durations can be longer, uh, but for space or let's say older deep tech uh, technologies, I would say, yeah, three years max maybe. Uh, after that, it becomes very long. Now, you know, I, I was involved in a company and after five years, they were still, let's say, uh, developing products, etc. Or they had the chance to have uh, very supportive investors, but in my opinion, it's too long. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Um, so thank you for your time. I don't know if Emanuele, you want to go ahead with um, another question? Uh, no, I think basically they are more on uh, the same level. And there is a company is a TRL4. So I assume it's, uh, it's the same research and development stage, honestly. It's a quite young project and yeah. um, yeah, in the, at that level, I agree with. I understand that Fabrice's point is uh, reaching more grants than uh, business angels probably. Is, uh, yeah, at least if you can go up to TRL six, and maybe uh, maybe then yeah, you can attract probably uh, private investors. Yeah, TRLs yeah. or VCs, something like this. Indeed, indeed. Thank you, Fabrice. Thank you, Lorenzo. You're welcome. Pleasure. Thank you, Eleonora, for uh, helping me on uh, on, on this uh, very nice uh, webinar. It was on a fireside chat with two great uh, investors. And thank you all, I, uh, all of you that attended this uh, webinar for joining yeah. us.
and just Emmanuel, people can reach us uh, on LinkedIn if they want uh, yeah, to connect and if they have some additional questions, uh, no problem. Absolutely, absolutely. This is a very good opportunity for all of you. Uh, please, uh, good networking. Uh, learn that indeed having good network is a very good way to learn new things and uh, open you great opportunities. So thank you everyone for joining. Thank you. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.